If you thought I was all about non-conventional guitars for worship music, I'm sorry. I did a thing. Hello and welcome to the video. Today, we're talking about why I think the Gretsch guitar is so common in worship music. If this is our first time meeting, my name is Justin and I'm all about worship guitar. Please subscribe and hit that bell notification button for my latest content and support me with a coffee. It will help me with these videos and my ministry. Stick around to the end for a bonus section where I share my HX Stomp patch made for this dual jet and where you can download it for yourself. If we've met before, welcome back. Grant's guitars and worship music seem to be synonymous now, but I remember a time worship guitarists were saving up for Tom Anderson Strats in the 90s. At one point in time, I was convinced I wanted an Alembic guitar. I bet you millennials haven't heard of that brand before. Then one of the OG worship heroes shows up in relative recent history and blows the gates wide open. And lastly, this is um, my latest addition. This is the Gretsch Duo Jet. Awesome sounding, just got that, that amazing Gretsch sound. Next Gretsch, we're talk to you this guys is about a this Gretsch uh, that vintage I have. select 53 this Duo Jet. Is uh, just and I've always loved Duo Jet's roll. machine. I'm not saying following trends is a bad thing. There is a reason why these guitars are so popular in PNW land, especially in churches with huge bands. It has to do with a concept that I'm going to call filling the mix. In general, different electric guitars will sit in different parts of the EQ spectrum. A Les Paul is going to be thicker and fuller sounding than a Telecaster, which is traditionally thinner and brighter. If you have a small band, no keyboards, no tracks, and you're the only guitarist in the band, you have the problem of having to fill in all that space by yourself. A Les Paul tuned with a thicker amp sound might be best for a situation like that. However, the big bands of modern church music like Hillsong, Bethel, and Elevation Worship, they have the opposite problem. When the band has two keyboardists, two guitarists, and tracks, it's really easy to get lost in the mix. A fuller sounding guitar is going to be hidden by the rest of the band. This is where I think the Gretsch does a very good job. It fills a specific part of the mix. By itself, the guitar is really quite bright. But put that brightness in a big band mix and that guitar becomes quite pleasant to the ear. I put this to the test with the opening jam track. I had a busy bass and drums track, and even when I tweak the rhythm tracks lower in volume, you can still make out what I'm playing. This is the primary strength of the Gretsch sound, clarity and definition in a big band mix. Now disclaimer, I'm not saying that the Gretsch is the only way to get clarity and definition. You can certainly get any guitar and tweak it with your amp and pedal board to get it bright and defined. The Gretsch just has this sonic quality right out of the box with much less tweaking needed. Now let's talk about a challenge you'll have to overcome if you're getting a Gretsch guitar when you're used to other solid body guitars like Strax and Les Pauls. I'm finding that I'm not picking as cleanly as I usually do as seen here. Why 
why is this happening? I believe there are two issues with my right hand. Firstly, it's used to having much less picking space allowance. On other solid body guitars, there's very little space between where my pick makes contact with the string and the body and or the pickups. The first time I played a Strat, I was picking so deep into the strings that my pick would scratch the top of the pickups. Eventually, I developed a shallower picking technique that's just right to ensure that I don't hit the top of the pickups, which might impede my picking motion. While it's suited for a Strat, this becomes a problem on the Gretsch as I might be putting in too little energy to pick effectively. Secondly, I'm used to a slightly more curved fretboard radius. Fender-style neck radii are commonly between 9.5 to 10 inches. Clocking in at 12 inches, which is a flatter fretboard, the strings on this dual jet sit on a flatter plane as compared to a Strat. Because my right hand is expecting a little more curvature, I might be overcompensating and end up picking too deep or too shallow depending on the lateral direction I'm moving between strings. To put it simply, I need to practice more on this guitar and make a mental note to switch picking styles. My goal is that I will eventually acclimatize to the guitar in the same way that I've acclimatized to both Windows and Mac systems. My hands and my mind are aware of the differences and I can accommodate these differences on instinct. If you stuck around this long, here's today's bonus section where I share the HX Stomp patch made specifically for this guitar. I've used an M model that can sound full and thick or thin and bright just by tweaking the treble and presence controls. Turn these up or down to taste and remember to tweak to fill the mix. To fit a variety of musical styles, I've decided on a Temi Overdrive and the OCD Distortion as the drive pedals. If you're looking for less gain, I'd swap out the OCD with the Kinky Boost and place it in front of the Timmy, which will push the Timmy into thicker gain. The chorus pedal is there for the times you need to play songs like Egypt or Great Things. If you want a copy of this patch, please head over to my Buy Me A Coffee page where you can get a hold of a download link. And there you have it, this is my Gretsch Duo Jet for praise and worship music. Question of the day, what's your go-to guitar for church services? Comment below, I'd really love to hear from you. That's it from me, thank you for watching this video. Please feel free to share it with someone whom you know is interested in praise and worship gear. 
If you've liked what you've seen, please consider subscribing and hitting that bell notification button and treat me with a coffee to support these videos and my ministry. Until next time, this is Justin signing off.